Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about why you need to pay attention to your social media following. This is going to be a couple of reviews. My name is Shut up! Okay, I know that these things don't matter. You know, the number of followers you have, you know, the amount of likes, the engagement, it doesn't really matter compared to, you know, doing good to the world and, you know, making money and running your business. In hindsight, they are tiny things. I want to play devil's advocate here and try and convince you otherwise or, you know, try and make you pay a little bit more attention to Instagram followings and Facebook followings and YouTube and all that jazz. And let me ask you this. How many accounts do you know that have a thousand, two thousand, three thousand and sometimes even ten thousand followers on their accounts and all they do is get up in the morning and just say, good morning, everybody. It's an amazing Monday. And then pick a quote from a Jordan Peterson or Gary Vaynerchuk book and plaster all that around their channels and talk about positivity and all of that. And that is their content strategy and that's it. And I don't want to take anything away from them. I mean, more power to them for being able to do that. I'm talking more to the people who run a business, who or own a business. If you don't have 5,000 followers and most of these guys have, you know, more than 5,000 followers, you need to kind of pay attention and see what you're doing wrong because supposedly as a business, you have more resources than hobbyists. And these guys are, you know, predominantly hobbyists. They have a, you know, a day job and they have an entire life apart from their social media, you know, facade that they have to maintain to pay bills. But whereas for the business owner or if you're running a business, that is what generates you revenue. As a videographer and a photographer, I've always been embarrassed about, you know, this topic, you know, like I've struggled so much to try and just pass the thousand thousand mark when it comes to followers and you know getting you know likes and all of that jazz and i've always tried to justify that with excuses it was almost as if you know i was trying to keep my work a secret from the rest of the world and you know trying to portray that the fact that um i have less than a thousand followers was on purpose i wasn't fooling anyone with this everybody saw right through it but that's what i was doing you know i was uh, pretty upset and annoyed and you know during isolation and covid when everybody started you know doing these things to grow their you know pages i was like you know why what's happening here and it bothered me and i kind of want to tell you guys why it bothered me so that you guys can be bothered together with me Okay, let's break the situation into three, you know, the time that's spent, the money that's spent and also, you know, the help that you have like employees and human resources. Let's break it down. I'm going to compare these hobbies with businesses like hobbyists are the people, you know, talk about positivity and talk about mental health and, you know, uh, you know, social media activists who have a separate day job as opposed to their online facade for hobbyists that have day jobs. They spend a night, they spend nine to five at an office and then come home tired, probably drained and they pull out their phones and their cameras and then they, you know, start making stuff for two to three hours and then some probably even go, you know, till midnight and probably, you know, like sleep really late just trying to make that content for them. Now they have to work twice as hard for the business owner or for the business, the nine to five is focused on developing the business. I know I'm saying the word business so much, but this is, um, you know, revolving around that topic. So you as a business owner, spend your nine to five thinking about the business, um, about what you're doing, about your products and your services. And then you come home and you also have that additional free time to dedicate to your business. So then why are these hobbies doing better on social media? You have more time to put into research on how to use ads. You have more time to, you know, learn skills like, you know, learn photography, videography, learn how to edit, learn how to use Photoshop. Twice as much time as these hobbyists have. And the second point is money. Like the hobbyists have a day job to pay their bills um, and maybe, you know, invest in their social media. Whereas you as a business solely earn through that so if you take that money and invest in to your business or into your social media to grow your marketing to grow your grow the number of eyeballs on your products and service you're essentially getting in more money for your business you're going to be able to pay your bills and you know have a savings and you know, grow your pot of money because you're investing that money back in so you have more resources you have more 
you have money set aside for Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and then you compare the two again and you're like, okay, you know what, you should be doing better than hobbyists who don't necessarily, and most of these guys don't touch Instagram ads. A lot of people who have successful, you know, um, Instagram pages in like massive numbers hardly even touch um, Instagram ads or any ads for that that matter. They just constantly are hacking, the, you know, the social media algorithm and, you know, like doing what's trendy, putting research into figuring out how they don't even like use ads. Whereas you as a business, you, you know, it's, it's a part of your marketing strategy to use these things. So again, ask yourself, if you are somebody who has that, um, why are you not doing as good as these hobbyists? That's a good question to ask. Let's talk about employees. Um, which is probably the most obvious um, advantage that businesses have. The hobbyist thinks about the ideas by themselves. They figure out how to make it or create it or, you know, create the content by themselves. They figure out when to post it by themselves. They, you know, try to do the research into trying to figure out what's trendy by themselves. But if you're a business, um, unless you're doing it on your own, of course, uh, but if you're a business, most probably you have a dedicated person or team to handle these things for you. I mean, I've been I've been working with salons, production houses, you know, com corporate companies, um, and you know, individual business owners, and they always have a partner or some marketing personnel, uh, social media manager, somebody that is there dedicated to come up with ideas. It all ties back to the fact that, you know, you have the money to hire these people. You have the money to outsource creation. You have money to hire people like us, uh, photographers and videographers to make content for your social media platforms. Whereas the hobbyists can't do that. I mean, I speak to so many people who want to start, uh, um, you know, like making really good quality videos. People who already have like a big following that, you know, contact um, me just because they want to learn how to do it. They're not asking me for free stuff, but they're asking me advice and knowledge on how they can do a lot of these things. Um, whereas you as a business can pay people to do that for you. Again, on that front, you have more employees. Hobbyist is a one man show. Why are you not doing well? So that's what I really wanted to talk about and kind of, you know, plant the seed of frustration in your mind if you're a business owner. And if you've constantly been telling yourself or giving excuses like, you know, you don't really care, you know, you care more about the business and the product. If you're that kind of person, I want to plant this seed on in your mind to try and get that out of your head and start admitting to yourself that you know what, I really don't know what I'm doing. I've been, you know, handling this page for, or handling this business for more than a year or two. Um, and I haven't been able to pass the 5,000 mark. Some even like, haven't even been able to break a thousand followers. And the first step to fixing yourself is admitting that you don't know anything. And you know, like even myself, I have no idea um, about what I need to do next. I just go and look at a lot of people, uh, look at a lot of profiles or, or a lot of people or these hobbies that are doing really well and I try to replicate what they're doing. The sooner you stop pretending that you know your shit um, and start pivoting, like if one idea doesn't work, you know, pick another idea. Don't get too hung up on, you know, protecting your brand or portraying your brand as this, you know, niche brand or, you know, this high class brand or whatever. Um, just let that go. So yeah, so if you're frustrated, um, I'm glad because we can be frustrated together because it's something that I struggle with on a daily basis. Um, and should you care about your social media following? I think I think you should because it's free advertising. If you have if you have a good product, if you believe that you have a good product, and if you believe that you are a good company or a good brand, social media is the best way to you know get your message out there and tell your story and you know make people believe in your brand. Um, and I think it's important. It's not as important as, you know, all the other things in life that are going out right now, but it should have a compartment in your brain uh, that's always thinking about it. Anyway, and that's what I really want to share. And why should you listen to me? I don't know. Fall